Hello and welcome to tutorial 156 and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can take some data from a CSV file that's a comma separated value file stored on your computer and use that data in a program. In this case we're going to be drawing some rectangles representing that data. In fact we're going to be doing two slightly different programs. In the first program we're going to be taking some data in the following format in other words, two numbers and a string, the two numbers being two levels on a chart, followed by a string representing a color and uh, a color using the, the new color objects. And uh, once we have imported that information, we're gonna draw some lines on the chart, which will be across the entire width of the chart in the second program, slightly more complex, we're gonna be processing a data set that has the following data. So we've got um, a date, a time, a date, a time, and then two levels and a color. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is drawing boxes on the chart between the two date times and between the two levels and coloring them the color uh, specified in the data file. And uh, as you can see, I've introduced a little bit of transparency here as well. Now, of course, if the chart doesn't have those specific times, then uh, it won't be able to draw them exactly on those times. In this particular case, uh, we do. So let's have a look at the first program. In other words, the program that is drawing these lines and processing this data. And we're going to be doing this using the stream reader. So what I've done in the program, which is available for download, if you uh, don't want to uh, spend time typing it in, but here we have the namespaces and uh, I put next to them the reason that we need each namespace. We're storing the file on our computer and what, what I've done is put the location in quotes as a string. Then uh, we've declared uh, in the variables a stream reader token list and two counters. So um, the first thing we do is create a method and what this method does, it draws a box based on uh, line one and line two, they are the two price levels and a color, which we're calling COL. So uh, we're using to create that BN points and the BN points are created, or rather we can create the BN points by simply telling it a time and a price, a time and a price. And uh, then later on in the draw box, we're telling the draw box to extend the box to the right. The color we're getting from this input col, and we're setting both the, uh, the color of the lines around the rectangle and the fill color. We're also just reducing the transparency of that, and that's a value up to 255. So we're just making it slightly transparent. And then we're, we're making sure that it persists. We've set a weight of two, and we add it to the chart. And then in a once statement, we process the actual data from the CSV file. And, uh, here we create the token list, which we're calling TL. And then we, cre we um, create the stream reader using the name of the file path. And we call the stream reader SR. And that's in a try catch loop in case there is a problem or the, uh, the file doesn't exist. And then quite simply to go through the uh, stream reader, we use while not sr dot end of stream. So this goes through the stream reader for every line. And uh, as it goes through the line, it adds those values into the um, uh, token list. So it reads the line and then stores that in the token list. Then having gone through the stream reader, we, we close it and we can now, the first thing we're doing in fact, is we're just printing the values just so I can show you what this looks like once it's been put inside the token list. And then we're going through it. Now, bear in mind that we have three items on each row, one, two, three. And uh, we're using a little bit of um, uh, error checking here just to make sure that we have the CSV file set up correctly. But let me just show you, first of all, what the control loop looks like. So I'm just going to press Control R to refresh the program. So it's just going to re go through the data. And uh, if you look at the data, which we're printing out, you'll see that we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what this uh, program is doing is storing this in 
the token list, but it's putting a line of three uh, one after the other in the token list. And so what we need to do is we have to go through the, the count, the total count divided by three minus one. And what that means is that uh, we can use this little uh, trick here. So perhaps if we put numbers in, it will make sense a little bit more. So for example, to start with the counter is equal to zero. So uh, count two uh, will also be equal to zero and we're drawing a box using um, zero, one and three. And if you look at the, um, the data again, that's going to be zero, two, nine, seven, five, one, two, nine, eight, six point seven five and two red. So you can see those first three entries, the ones that were in on the first line of the CSV. And uh, similarly, if we now imagine that uh, the control value has gone to one, then control two is equal to three. So we uh, draw the box with string to number TL item three, four, and five. And if we look at our printout again on the chart, we'll say that, see that that is three, four, and five. So that's the next row in the CSV file. And hence we get the, uh, the lines drawn as you can see. Now that the, um, the thing I skipped over there was this part here, the error, uh, error frac portion of TL count over three. So what I'm doing is counting the total number of entries in the token list, dividing it by three and saying, is there any uh, fraction portion left over? If there isn't, we're good. It means that we've got the exact number of elements that we need and we can go ahead and do the drawing. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the next item that we're processing. And this is sort of the same, except now we have a start date time, end date time before we have the two levels and the color. So let's have a look at the program. And uh, a lot of this will be familiar to you from the first program. We're declaring another variable here called TMPDT, which is a date time variable. Draw box method is very similar apart from we've now got two more inputs, DT1 and DT2. The rectangle created is very similar apart from we use instead of zero, we use DT1 and instead of zero, we use DT2. We also set the extension right to false. We do not need that anymore. In terms of processing the data, again, it's very similar. However, because we now have seven items on each row, we uh, check frac portion using divide by seven. And then also the counter goes through the count divided by seven minus one. And instead of multiplying by three, we multiply by seven. It's uh, the same logic. And then when we draw the box, we need to add in the date times. And uh, to create those, we use this variable that we created, tmpdt and then dot from EL date time. And what this does, it takes the easy language legacy date and the easy language legacy time. Using this, uh, this method, we can create a date time object. And that is what we input into the method to draw the box. This is what we get. Now bear in mind, both these programs, they just run once. Uh, when the program starts. So the uh, even if the CSV files were updated, that would not change anything. This runs when the program is first applied or if you do a control R. Anyway, um, hopefully that will be useful for you. If you're not part of the Markplex email list, then please join. It's uh, markplex.com. And uh, if you found this useful, then please subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the logo, which will be appearing in the center of the screen in a few seconds. Thank you very much.